Hello. I'm here with uh, Morton Rand Hendrickson of LinkedIn Learning. He, uh, Morton's here with me today at an Event Apart Online Together Fall Summit. Isn't that a mouthful? Event Apart Online Together and Event Apart Online Together Fall Summit. Morton will give a presentation on practical ethics for the modern web designer. Morton creates online and in-person courses as a senior staff instructor for LinkedIn Learning. He teaches interaction design at Emily Carr University of Art and Design and is an active contributor to several open source projects. Morton is also a prolific amateur photographer and his work's been featured in print and online magazines and exhibits. And he created and organized the 12 by 12 Vancouver Photo Marathon for five years. Morton, welcome. Thank you. It's good to see you. And it's all nice the people to see you too. on the internet. <laughs> That's quite a booth. Yeah, this is I, my this is my recording booth at home. Uh, so because I make, like I said, I make online video training. So this is where I hide out when I do my training, so that it always sounds the same. And, nice and you same. have uh, you have at least one child at home. Yep, one young child at home. Yep, there's How a four year old. But but not intruding in in daddy space right now. Uh, no, because I've always worked from home, or at least for as long as he's been alive. Um, and he knows we, we've separated our house so that our the work areas are work areas. And he's been aware since the beginning that he's only allowed in the work areas if we tell him to. And also we, my wife and I, make sure that we never work anywhere except there. So we never take work outside of those areas. Um, that way he knows like there's this, like they're banned zones that are not for play. And if we're in those zones, he's not allowed to bother us. And uh, he also knows if we're anywhere else, then we are available for bothering at any time. <laughs> That's a good, That's... like, it's a good work from home tip to anyone who is working from home with family members of any kind to just establish parameters and say like, within these boundaries, that is where all work happens. And then never take your laptop to the couch or the kitchen table or anything else, but just make work happen in one location. That's lovely. I always thought, you know, you hear children need boundaries, but you've taken that literally. <laughs> like here you play, boop, 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 nope, nope, there you do not. Well, yeah. uh, welcome. thank you for making time for us today. Would you kindly explain exactly what you'll be talking about at an event apart? <laughs> exactly what I've been talking about. Okay. Yeah. Um, the, we our community, so the web community that is anyone who works on the web or as I say, on or with the web. Uh, we are, what, a 30 year old community at this point, 25, 30 years old, something like that, depending on when you decide to start counting. Um, and we've created an industry that has gone through its you know, infant state to through its uh, uh, juvenile state and are, is now basically in adulthood. And when you become an adult, you need to start taking stock of what you do and how you do it and what kind of responsibilities you are and what you create in the world. And um, that is, you're seeing, like in the world, you see a lot of uh, consequences of decisions that were made a long time ago or not so long time ago uh, on the web that were mainly made for very, without very much forethought to what would happen. Um, and, what we are waking up to now as an industry is that when we make, make things on the web, those things change the world. And for that reason, we need to start thinking carefully about what we're doing and how we do it. Uh, and to that end, there's this entire field of study called ethics um, that has existed for thousands of years that has a lot to tell us about just how we think about our interactions with the world, our interactions with people and what we do like how our actions in the world impact the world at large and other people. Um, so my talk is an attempt at taking this nebulous concept of ethics, focus it in on design craft and design practice, and then provide practical methodology to apply ethical thinking to design practice in such a way that it not only is a tool to help you avoid 
causing disaster, but actually help you evolve your products and your designs and everything you're doing into something that focuses more on what happens in the world and what happens in the future. Um, it's something I've worked on for, I think I started like, seriously focusing on figuring out how to do ethics in design um, about five years ago, but this, this goes all the way back to when I was in university. So at university, I studied philosophy. Uh, as one does when uh, when you come out of you know, you come out of high school and you're like I don't know what to do, I'll study philosophy. That's vague, right? And then um, midway through my studies, I was I was on a track that would ta have taken me to a PhD. But then I uh, moved to Canada, uh, and I decided to start doing something a little more practical. So I ended up working on the web instead. And now somehow the circle has completed. So I'm back where I started and looking at the same ethical problems I did when I was in university. So I'm taking all that book knowledge from back then and combine it with all my knowledge of the web industry and try to combine them into something that is actionable for the practitioners who work in our field. It's good that you said actionable. I think um, the people who attend our show are, are very smart and the designers I know are very smart but still it's kind of a hands-on industry. It's a craft industry. Mm -hmm. So any framework like that has, in order to be effective, would have to have sort of simple trees, next steps, things you can do, things you can tell other people. Otherwise yes. it becomes an intellectual exercise, which maybe doesn't get ad adapted that widely. Is there an official system of ethics in the web profession? And if not, why not? There isn't anything in the web profession. There is, uh, if you're a member of the, what is it, the M A M C A C M American Computer Manufacturers Association, like the, the, the body that governs, like the, the engineering type body, but for computer engineers, they have a code of ethics uh, that's fairly robust that exists. So if you're a member of that, then sure. But the majority of people who work on the web are not members of ACM or anything else. Um, so ACM would be for like, um, it's for computer engineers. Monitor, right. So I'll, I won't make monitors that pollute the earth or, or I will try to lower the carbon footprint of everything that I make. Yeah. I will reuse, I will use re, reusable materials. Or things yeah. Like it's, that. So, so there is a code of ethics that you could say like, well, we're in the same space so technically there there is yeah. an organization that has a thing that and it's vague enough like or it's sorry not vague it's broad enough that it applies to design craft but it's not a it's not a code of ethic that's that is attached to a specific craft right so web practitioners and i use the term practitioners very deliberately and i'll, I'll explain why in a second but web practitioners do not have any kind of governing body so there is no there is no industry um, system or method or body in place to create ethics or a code of ethics or any of that kind or apply it or enforce it or do anything, right? Um, this is a problem that stems back to like the design industry has the same problem. If you go back to like 1960s and you look at first things first manifesto, they're basically talking about the same stuff. It's kind of weird because when you read the first things first manifesto, you, you it, it, with the eyes of today are like, oh yeah, right. So they basically outlined the current situation in the 60s and, pr and preordained all the things that are happening now. But when they were looking at it, they were looking at it through the lens of just print advertising and all the things that they were warning about in that manifesto have come to fruition, but through the web instead. Um, and product designers too, I would think. Yeah, product anyone is, who does it's, design. It's, they, I think, um, you know, like, less but better, that kind of thing. Yep. There, there is thinking about ethics. Ethics in thinking is, has been a significant part of critical design for like 60 years, right? Um, and if you go, well, if you go even further back, like you, you can keep going back in time and you'll see that ethical considerations have always been had around design, right? If you go back to Gutenberg, you'll see, the idea of being able to print materials in, an, in, an, in a cost-effective way had ethical consequences and people were discussing the ethics around it um, even back then. Like who has the power to do this? What happens when you disseminate information? Who can read it? Who can access it? Who can interpret it? Like there's all these things, right? What is unique about the design industry um, 
is that we have managed, in, in spite of having these conversations, we've managed to somehow skirt the issue of actually applying it in any meaningful way. So there's a ton of manifestos that have been written. There's a ton of codes of ethics that have been written, but there's never been any effort to solidify it into practice. Or rather, people can do it, but on an individual basis. And if you try to say, we should actually do this as a community, everyone's like, no, 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 no. You're impeding on my freedom to do whatever I want, right? You're hindering design in, in some way. And what I'm trying to do is say, we as designers and creators on the web um, can use ethics and ethical me methodology to, as a creative tool to make better products because it allows us to reflect on what we're doing and um, give us new insight into our work so that, so that we, instead of just taking the very quick route that might end up being a lesser product, we take the time to consider, wait, are there other, other audiences that we need to serve? Are there other people that, uh, or are people affected by this in a way we didn't intend? And if so, is that an opportunity to do something different so that those people will not be negatively affected? Is there a way of implementing this in such a way that it's more future-proof and more friendly to the user and more efficient to the user and uh, gives the user the capabilities to do and be what they have reason to value rather than just meeting our goals as designers? Um, and so the term ethics pops up in conf conferences and books and articles and everything all the time now because it's such a hot issue. Um, a lot of the conversations that we're having are what I call moral hand-wringing conversations, where you'll have a talk sure. or a presentation where you basically talk about all the things that are going wrong and make a very compelling case for something must be done, but then we don't get there. So what I've done is just say, okay, let's just put all that moral hand-wringing to the back and say, you know, this exists, it's a problem. Let's look at, take an hour and look at how we can do something about this in such a way that it becomes a, a tool for us and that we can do it all the way down to individual level. So uh, a common concern for people when we talk about ethics is people are working in positions where they don't have decision-making power, maybe that even on what question. they do themselves, right? So right. you're I'm, in- No, I'm not, I'm not the boss of the company. Yeah, so, exactly. So on one level, you're talking about a community coming together to agree to a set of ethics, which hasn't happened yet, but you mm -hmm. have a framework for that and you want to talk about that. But I'm also concerned when people leave the event or when people who are watching this now go back to their desk, what can they do? What can an individual, you know, I mean, there's these all or nothing things like quit your job if yeah. you don't like, but most people <laughs> don't have the autonomy, don't have the freedom, can't afford. Most people yep. can't afford to quit their job the first time there's something going on at the company that they don't like. Yeah. So this like, is... how do you work for, how does the individual practitioner bring ethics to bear in their daily life in a way that's satisfying? So I think this is probably one of the most important parts of the conversation that it has to be something that is understandable, meaningful, and actionable to each individual in spite of their position within an organization or a company, right? So what I've done is looked at, um, like there are two facets to ethics. You have ethics is on one hand uh, about how you are as a person, like the being, and then on the other hand, on doing. And what I've done is said, you can take both of these things and say like, I want to be an ethical designer and apply ethical thinking to my process and, and borrow from all these different traditions within moral philosophy to pull useful parts out of it. And I, I've created a framework for that so that you can say like, you can come out of problems as a, as a Kantian deontologist which makes no sense to people who don't study philosophy. But if I instead say, you can come at this problem from when I make decisions, I am implicitly saying that everyone else in the same situation should also make the same decision. So every decision you make, you are effectively giving everyone else license to doing the same thing. So if you make a decision that might negatively impact the web, you have to scale that up to like a million. Like when you had, um, there was a company that made a service where you could use ad retargeting to convince people to do things. Like the, they were advertising things like, if you want someone to quit smoking, you can buy a service that would actually target that person and expose them to content that would encourage them to quit smoking. And then one of the other services they were like, do you want your girlfriend to break up with you? You can do that too. And it's, and it's extremely evil, right? But the funny part is 
that is what ad targeting, ad retargeting is. It's just that they chose to, instead of using it to just sell you a bottle of pop, they're doing it to manipulate you as a person and in your life. And once you start putting products like that into the world, you are effectively saying, this is an okay thing to do. Um, so I'm, I've taken these different moral philosophies and said, this is what they teach us about the world. And here's how you can apply that to your thinking to make it a constructive way of going through your design process. And then on the very practical side, we have um, how you so actually- That's the being part, right? that's Yeah, the that's the being, being part. part. That's, that's, a, that's a being as in like, you want to be a person who meditates, right? Meditation is a practice, not a thing you do. It's like, you have to go through it and do it many times and it becomes part of who you are. Ethics is okay. the same. It's very much a practice that you have to take on. It's a, it's a continuous piece of work that never ends, that you keep trying to be this. And it, and it permeates your entire life. The doing part, doing. yeah, so the doing, so this is like the back, this is what happens inside your head. The doing part is to very concretely start, start looking at your practice on what you are doing. Like when you are designing a website, you choose what types of components you put on the website. If you then anchor those in some basic ethical premises, for instance, um, what's called a capability approach, which says um, an act is only good and right if it is an act that gives the end user the capabilities to do and be what they have reason to value. And you set that, you say, when we are publishing content on the web, we have to make sure that the end user has value in this content beyond just doing what we want them to do. They actually have to be able to use this in some meaningful way in their life to get what they want out of their life. And then you can say, if that's the goal and we are writing code, we have to make sure that our code is accessible so that they are able to access it, to access these capabilities to do the things, right? So I've created a way of thinking about everything all the way down to a design and code level to anchor it in ethics and then be able to bring up questions al along the way about why you're doing the things you're doing. And this give, this empowers every worker within an organization to raise issues because it gives them the language to be able to address like, instead of using a div and then wrapping JavaScript in it to make it a button, we should be using a button because a button means that even if you come to that document and JavaScript fails, you are able to interact with it in the way that was intended and you get access to the thing they were intended to get access to. And as a bonus, by doing it this way, we are simplifying it. So it's contextualizing our approach into a framing that uses ethics in a constructive way. So there's outputs, you can, it's testable. It's like, on the one hand, it's kind of abstract. It's a way of thinking, it's a way of being, changing yep. how you approach it at work. But there's this output where you can say, did they make up, use the HTML button element to make a button? No. They used a bunch of spans and a bunch of JavaScript. Yeah. So then there's a disconnect between the ethics and the action. And obviously, it's not all just accessibility. It's lots. Of no, things. it's 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 many things. And, it, many and things. the idea is you use and, and material. Yeah. And it, it, the the core idea is that you can use this to reframe your thinking about what you are doing because the the purpose of the web, if we just strip away all the other things. The whole purpose of the web is to give people the ability or the capability of communicating with people through the internet, right? And anything you do that needs to consider what are the consequences of people communicating through the internet? Am I able to, like, I have an idea in my head. Am I able to translate that in a meaningful way to you? So you have the same idea in your head. And does that then allow you to do and be what you have reason to value? And then if that's the case, how do I do this in a technical and design way so that I ensure you get what I intended to give to you? So you have the autonomy to take that and do with it what you like. That's well, the- I, am, I love it. I'm really looking forward to seeing this talk next week. And uh, folks, if you're interested in what Morton's talking about, uh, you can find Morton online at Twitter, where he is more tan, literally M O R number ten, M O R yes. numeral one numeral zero. So twitter.com slash more ten. And on LinkedIn, where he is the only Morton Rand Hedrinkson. Yes. So if you I manage spell to spell my name correctly, <laughs> yeah. then you'll find me. <laughs> yes, Hendrickson, Morton Rand Hendrickson. Uh, I really want to thank you for your time today. This has been great. And well, thank you for having everybody. me. Okay. Pleasure.
All righty. Bye-bye. Bye.